Hey, Brady, how has your mindset changed coming into this year than past seasons? Well, I mean, you know, the last couple of years we've been loaded with talent and with experience. Uh, you know, as a freshman coming to the program, playing behind Ty Wesley and, and all of those other veteran guys, you have the mindset of when you get an opportunity, you need to make the most of it. You need to go in and when you come off the bench, bring some energy, you know, bring some fire and uh, do the best that you can with what's given to you. Well, obviously, you lose Ty Wesley, WAC Player of the Year. You lose, you know, six, seven seniors that contributed a ton last year. And uh, guys around the Valley start asking, you know, so you realize you got to step up. And, and honestly, you know, it's, it's been an exciting time for me. Um, you know, I've, I've done the best that I could filling the role that coaches wanted me to do the last few years and, and being that guy that brought energy off the bench and brought that spark. But going into this season, you know, I, I felt like I put the work in, the, you know, growing up and throughout my life to, to be ready for a senior year to where our team relies on me and, and is looking for me to lead by, you know, by example on and off the floor and things. And so, you know, mentality is definitely changing the fact that I realize – I can't just sit in the back and, you know, fulfill my little role. I need to be a leader in just about every aspect of the game and, and uh, show guys what we need to do to win in practice and, and on the floor as well. Starting a, a several games last year, does that help you this year? Or how do you look at that experience? I mean, it did. You know, starting last year, it was awesome. You know, unfortunately, Nate Bendel's foot was hurt, so he couldn't play at the time. And so I had the opportunity to start. And, you know, I started against BYU last year. And, you know, it was a fun experience, something I looked forward to. And, and I felt like I played really well as a, as a starter. I, you know, I got my mind right and realized what I needed to do, and I played hard. And, and it definitely has helped this year. You know, I, I just try to take each game, you know, one at a time and, and realize that every game is important and that I need to play well for us to win. Um, and so it, it, it helped last year, but more than anything, I just tried to have the mindset this year that I need to step up in all aspects of the game and, 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 and lead our team. Specifically, what did you do in the offseason to improve yourself coming into this year? Um, you know, I, I spent a lot of time. When the season ended, I, t I took a couple weeks off to let my body rest and things. But as soon as that was over, I, uh, I was back in the gym. You know, one thing I've always struggled with physically is, is my conditioning. For whatever reason, it's been hard for me to, to breathe at times and things. And so I spent a lot of time in the off season, you know, working on different anaerobic exercises and things to, to get my breathing better. Um, I, uh, you know, other than conditioning, I spent a ton of time in the gym, obviously working on my low post moves, knowing that's where I was going to spend a lot of time. You know, last year that we could throw the ball in the tie, and there was a good chance that he was going to go score it. Um, you know, this year I don't want to be a, a pass, pass, pass back guy where they throw me the ball and I don't feel comfortable with it. So, you know, I, I spent a lot of time in the gym working on different post moves, working on, you know, face-ups and different things that I haven't previously done in my life um, because I haven't really played post until Utah State. Um, I was very fortunate, you know, quite a few times this summer to work with, you know, a couple of Aggie greats and Gary Wilkinson and uh, J.C. Carroll. You know, you work with Gary, and obviously that helps you in the post. You work with J.C., and he's going to show you a little bit about the perimeter stuff. So, you know, I was really fortunate there to have two guys that are professional basketball players now doing really well that were willing to take the time with me and show me what I needed to improve on and help me in those areas um, of, of scoring and defense and, and, and knowing how to score and getting that confidence for when I get the ball. Who is the uh, comedian on the team? Oh, that's a good question. You know, we, we got some funny guys this year. I, I'd probably have to go with Ben Clifford. You know, love the kid to death. He works his, works his tail off every day. Um, but he always has kind of a, a lightheartedness to him a little bit. You know, he's given everything he's got, and you understand that. But at the same time, he'll joke about something stupid he does, or he'll yell at himself, and everyone will start laughing when he makes a mistake. And, and uh, you know, it's good to have guys like that around. A lot of times, you know, the, the atmosphere gets so serious because we want to win games, we want to get better that you forget you're here having, having fun. We're playing basketball, doing what we love. And so, you know, Ben Clifford's a great guy, you know, super funny. Igor, a uh, new guy this year, is really funny. You know, his English and stuff makes it even uh, a little bit more funny than it probably should be as he's trying to learn the language and things. But, you know, we've got some great guys on the team that, that help lighten um, the experience. Top three dunkers, and who's the best dunker on the team? Best dunker on the team, Keyshawn Reed. Um, new guy this year, guy can flat fly. He's got big hands. He can hold the ball. Um, you know, he's, he's going to have some top 10 dunks this year. I, I, I have no doubt in that. He'll, uh, he'll get the crowd up on their feet and stuff. He's very explosive. Um, I'd probably put myself at number two. Uh, and number three, I would have to say, would be uh, Steve Thornton, I would guess. Our, our new starting three man, really long, really athletic, jumps out of the gym. Um, not afraid to go to the hole and get up on top of somebody and dunk it. So I think we have a few guys this year that will get the crowd up and going. What's it like to play in the spectrum? It's unbelievable. I mean, you, I'm in class today, um, three days before our game, you know, with BYU, and uh, our teacher's talking about how there's 40 tents out there and guys are 
and the, and the, t the talk of our sports psychology class is just how excited and how crazy the, the, the spectrum is going to be. And I just don't feel like there's very many places in the country that you can go and play that you have people camping out three or four days before a game and, you know, freezing weather, in tents, um, because they want to be the guys on the front row that are causing all the, the chaos. And so, you know, there's nothing like the spectrum as a player. You get tired in the games, you get worn down, and then something happens and the, the fans go crazy, the spectrum starts rocking, and uh, it's, it's an amazing, amazing place to play as a player. Brady, thank you so much.